Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another random live chat. And I just realized my ring light wasn't on. So yeah, this is something that I've been meaning to do for quite a bit, but uh, I either was uh, sick or I had planned to do obviously a birthday live stream last month, but unfortunately my cat Levi sadly passed away uh, five days prior. Um, and so uh, I just haven't also been in the right frame of mind to do it, but I decided um, whilst coming up with some ideas for stuff that I may as well just schedule a live stream for today. So that's that's what's happening. Uh, I have some things written down here uh, for topics because, you know, I need topics to talk about in the lull moments whilst I'm waiting for comments because otherwise I'll just, you know, sit here like this waiting for people to come because uh, I'd have nothing to talk about. So I need the streaming topics to keep me on track too and also, you know, keep the stream going. So there are some things I will be talking about, channel related stuff. Uh, my interest being, you know, Star Trek, Doctor Who, uh, that type of stuff. I the, What actually the, the, the true main reason why I did this was because initially I was gonna have a video come out uh, either today or tomorrow talking about my fears for the future of Star Trek. And as I was filming that video, I just wasn't liking it. I wasn't in the right headspace for it. Um, so eventually I just scrapped it and decided, fuck it, I'll just do it as a live stream. So that's actually the true reason why uh, we have uh, this live stream. So actually I need to, I just realized that uh, I didn't have my banner going along because I, do not know how long this stream is going to last for. It could last 40 minutes. It could last a half hour. It could last an hour and 40 minutes, uh, or it could go the full two hours, which I normally like to try and do. We'll just see what you are in and how long uh, I talk about these topics. So I do see a comment here uh, from Tammy over at Physical Media Live saying, hello, Michael, I hope you're okay. New Doctor Who is coming out on BBC, yes. Series season one officially starts in just a couple of weeks, um, which of course I will be reviewing. But how the first two reviews are going to go kind of depends on a lot of things because, for those who don't know, uh, it was announced uh, when when we were getting the show that you know uh, with Doctor Who it was going to air on. Uh, go straight to streaming first while still keeping its original uh, time slot on the BBC One. So for me, on uh, there is a streaming service that I have that might potentially get it because uh, it goes on at midnight um, in you know for the first two episodes. And uh, so if the RTE player which is where the last four specials have gone, uh, gets at midnight, then I'll be able to split my review up into two different uh, reviews. If not, I'm gonna have to wait for the actual air time, and which then I'm gonna have to lump the two together um, into one video uh, and pray that I remember things, you know, because I'll have, they should just, if, if that's the way it's going to go, it'll literally just be as soon as episode two finishes, I'll come straight upstairs, turn on the ring light, turn on the big light, and start recording. Uh, so I might need to actually take notes, which will be the very first time I've actually had to do that. Um, so that's worst case scenario on if it doesn't immediately go onto the RTE player, because we have no word. We literally have no word. We know that it's going on through all the other streaming sites at different times um and no mention of the rte player because it went it just quietly went onto the rte player um which so i don't know what way that is uh going to go uh tammy also says sorry to hear about your cat my dog hasn't been well lately thank you tammy i had levi for eight long wonderful years he was the best cat I could have ever asked for. Um, I am missing that routine of having him here. Uh, I have thought about getting a new cat, um, but it's still way too soon for that. 
you know, it's been nearly two months since he sadly passed away. He just got sick randomly um, over the span of two days and he just sadly died. And I knew it was coming um, when I started noticing he was looking for places to die. So that's how I knew it was coming. So I thankfully got the closure of, you know, saying what I wanted to say to to Levi before he sadly passed. Um, just made coffee, says Tammy. I'm not a coffee person. I don't like the taste. Um, that's just me. Uh, I think I'll just stick to the good old BPMs here um, for for my drink of choice. That's literally my drink of choice. Like over here in Ireland, we we introduced the new this new recycling scheme where they add a fifteen cent tax onto our drinks, and then if we return it to these dedicated machines, we get our money back. So if it has that uh, our logo there, um, that means I can return and get my money back. But it also means that you know uh, I, I've been hoarding these, you know, because I want to give it, put them back all together. And I have a bag downstairs with all, all the bottles to be returned and the amount of BPM that is in there, I wish was a joke. This is not sponsored, by the way. I just love this drink and I wish they actually would sponsor me, not going to lie. Um, Tammy says, I will have uh, I will have to wait for the physical release of Doctor Who. It could be a while. It could be a while, you know, because we have seven weeks uh, of, the, of the show. You know, we're getting two episodes on the 11th, the 10th slash 11th. Um, and then, uh, then I'll go to one episode a week after that. And, you know, when they announced the titles as well as the writers, I was surprised that Russell was going to write like six out of the eight episodes. Uh, only two episodes weren't written by him. One has been penned by Stephen Moffat. He's coming back. I believe that episode is called Boom. Um, and then we have some Loki writers from Loki season two writing and penning and directing an episode. I forget which episode title that one is. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how that goes. It's also uh, rumored that uh, Moffa is going to be doing the this year's Christmas special. Um, I'm not sure when I'll actually get my hands on it when it releases, because I don't have Amazon at the moment. Um, so maybe when I get that back, I'll get it. Or I might just get Amazon just to get that. We'll we'll, we'll see how we'll see how things go and when it gets released. Um, just had to pay a three hundred pound uh, vet bill. My dog is turning thirteen uh, now on lots of drugs. Yeah, um, it was going to be like you see. I, if Levi had made it one more day, I would have brought him to the vet because it was the he died the day before I I got paid. Unfortunately. Um, and I could have brought, I would have brought them. Uh, there's also a bunch of ifs and buts of how things could have been differently, but I don't tend to dwell on that. But yeah, vets are like, like it's extremely expensive to bring to a vet. Um, your drink is probably cheaper than I pay for. I pay a fiver for a coffee. Yeah, it is like, uh, it depends on where I get it. Uh, most places uh, on average with the 15 cent deposit, uh, I'm paying about two euro uh, for my local shop, which is about a five minute walk for me. Um, I I think I pay like nearly three euro for it. Uh, so it just depends on how where, where people get it from. So um, back to talking Doctor Who, because I have seen some filming uh, that they, they are filming for the season two finale um which uh apparently the doctor's not acting like the doctor spoiler alert for uh, i should have mentioned uh if you don't want to know what's going to happen for uh the the season series finale of season two from what i know from seeing the filming and what's been talked about uh now is your chance to click off you have uh this many seconds to do so because i will be talking spoilers okay you've had your chance um basically from what we've gathered from the filming is the doctor's not acting like the doctor um we uh will also you know they also confirmed that we have another new companion joining the tardis for season two who uh i believe her her name is vera 
Uh, she was in The Mandalorian, not Mandalorian, uh, Andor. It was one of those Star Wars stores uh, as, uh, shows. I got it eventually. Um, and because we knew that the Doctor was going to get a new companion because we've seen Vera filming, uh, but we didn't know what was going to happen to Ruby. Um, and so also Mel, you know, the classic companion Mel, who is going to, who had an appearance in The Giggle. Uh, and will make an appearance in the season finale of season one, uh, is also going to have an appearance in the season finale for season two, because it is Earth-based, which means more than likely we're going to see Unit again, uh, and potentially Kate Stewart as well. Um, not sure if we're going to see uh, Rose Noble like we will in the season one finale, um, but we'll just have to wait and see. So what are my thoughts on the fact that we're getting yet another new companion and we're having a, another two TARDIS team? Well, it's been done before. You know, we've, we've had multiple uh, tar TARDIS teams with just more than one companion. Um, would have been nice if I had, you know, stuck to the one, just the one companion because, you know, uh, throughout all of uh, Whitaker's era, it's been uh, at least four, you know, the Doctor plus three other companions. So it would have been just nice to have long, a longer stretch with uh, just the one companion. Um, but I'll be interested to see how Vera does and how she's introduced and stuff. I just want a, a companion that's out of time, you know, not from modern day Earth. Uh, that is something that I would do want because... Uh, I mean, since the revival, we haven't had that. Whereas in classic Doctor Who, we've had that. We've had multiple companions, not from Earth, um, and stuff. So I would I would like that? Because uh, I, I know I, if I remember correctly, Clara was originally going to be the Victorian Clara that we've seen in the Snowmen, but then uh, Moffat changed his mind because he didn't want to have someone out of time uh, going into the future and stuff. So, um, yeah, that's that's basically all I have uh, to talk about for for Doctor Who. Obviously, um, not next week, but the week after um, on the third of May. Yeah, the third of May, I will have my next classic Doctor Who uh, review voted for by you. The poll is still up, up and running. Uh, it, ends Thursday uh, the 25th at midnight uh, so if you want to go see what the four episodes you have to choose from are um, so far one is winning and it is a Dalek story I forget which one one of the Pertwee Dalek stories uh, I can say that much for sure which I'll of course then uh, watch and film for um, very very soon so uh what are some recent watches for me you know um no moving away from the doctor who topics uh I, actually as i answer uh, some comments from tammy here so obviously she wanted spoilers um so tammy says i would have put uh the war doctor as the 15th one then jody as the 14th one i mean technically Technically, yes, that's actually technically what they are. Not not necessarily the War Doctor, but uh, because because of how the regenerations work um, and such, the War Doctor is actually technically the Ninth Doctor, and our Ninth Doctor is really the Tenth Doctor, and the Tenth Doctor is really the Eleventh, and then Eleven is really Twelve, and so thir uh, so Twelve is really Thirteen, and Thirteen is really Fourteen, and 14 is really 15 and shooty is really 16 uh doctor number 16 um if you want to give the war doctor the uh the anagram of he is the real ninth doctor uh but he's just referred to as the war doctor and eccleston is always referred to as the the ninth doctor because that's that's the way that worked um uh so yeah technically shooty is really the 16th Doctor 17, if you want to. Well, actually, no, then, then it goes, like, uh, 
or, or up a good bunch if you're counting the time as trial stuff. Actually, that does remind me. Uh, I almost forgot. So sticking with some more Doctor Who talks here. Um, it was confirmed by Russell in a magazine. I think it was the SFX magazine that's just come out that uh, season one of the show is going to tie heavily in with the timeless child which is interesting uh because most fans who have been against the timeless child uh have wanted it to not be continued in with the uh russell era um you know we've had some nods to it in the 60th and uh the church on ruby road uh, so to know that we are getting more timeless child stuff in with the um for season one that's going to tie heavily not i don't necessarily know heavily in with a uh, ruby storyline of being adopted but it, there's going to be some parallels there and uh, that's what russell has said um so yeah now that that, that definitely does bring us up with uh, the end of the Doctor Who talks. Uh, so what have been my recent watches? Well, um, the Fallout TV series uh, I watched and loved. I talked about that on uh, Luke's channel uh, when I was on his live stream on Wednesday. Um, we talked a good bit about that, spoiler free, of course, and I will continue, <laughs> excuse me, um, I will continue to keep in the spoiler free territory for that for those who have started it and haven't finished it or those who haven't started it yet um just for those people who have wa who watched the vod afterwards or for those who are here now um i won't be talking about spoilers for the pilot series but if you're on the fence on whether or not you want to watch it um do it's brilliant just watch episode one and to get get a feel for it to see if you do want to continue because trust me the first 20 minutes of episode one is mwah, chef's kiss and i'm really happy that we got the official confirmation that it is getting a season two um which i'm very happy about because i i love the show you know um in like yesterday's pickups video and on luke's stream i talked uh, about the massive like crossover of voice acting for uh star trek and bethesda games you know uh in the fallout tv series um lucy who is our one of our one of three main protagonists um she actually voices gwyn in star trek prodigy so that's how i recognize her um let's see sir patrick stewart was the voice of uriel septum in the elder scrolls oblivion um and not necessarily a star trek connection but uh liam neeson uh voices the your father in fallout 3 which i have been playing i'm like 11 hours deep into my very first playthrough of that um and then of course uh renee abajawan i probably butchered his uh last name which i do apologize for uh who played odo in ds9 voices mr house in the uh new vegas game uh some other notice notable voice uh talents celebrity voice talents in the show uh, and not necessarily the show but in fallout games specifically uh ron perlman uh is always the narrator for some of the games you know he's the one that says war war never changes that's him uh he was also the announcer for like fallout for when they announced that the bombs had started to drop um let's see danny trejo was in new vegas he he voiced a character in new vegas as well um so the list the list is is ongoing of how many there's been like matthew perry um loved fallout 3 so much that he talked about how it ended up hurting his hands ended up voicing one of the uh the main villains in new vegas he's the he plays Benny, the guy who shoots you uh, in New Vegas. Um, so Tammy says, I saw the trailer for Fallout. Looks amazing. When you get the the chance, Tammy, watch it. Like they, the episode lengths vary like b 
between like 40 minutes to to an hour um but i highly recommend that you do watch the fallout series like it has ignited a lot of uh fallout fans to go back to the games i'm a casual fallout fan like i know most of the things uh just not all of the things um and uh so uh Tammy says, are we getting a physical release of Fallout? I'm not 100% sure. It came out 11 days ago uh, through Paramount, not Paramount, uh, through Amazon. So I'm not sure how well Amazon is for like doing their own uh, releases of their own shows. Uh, but if it, if it does, I will 100% pick it up because I enjoyed it. I've been trying to convince my cousin, who's a bigger Fallout fan than I am, to play it. Like um, some of the experiments that some vaults had to go through is crazy. There was a vault. Um, I forget the name of the vaults here, so I do apologize for for the more experienced Fallout fans. Uh, as I said, I am a, a casual Fallout fan. So I'm remembering the details, just not which vault it was. Uh, but there was a vault where they basically had to, the, the experiment was the vault dwellers had to vote yearly for someone to be killed. If not, then the entire vault would be killed. And so that's what they did. They, um, they would vote yearly for the next overseer uh, and that overseer, uh, who oversaw the the vault, hence the name Overseer, um, would be the one that was killed, and that kept going on until there was just five people in the vault, and when it was down to the last five, uh, they refused. They refused to vote for someone uh, to be killed as their yearly sacrifice, and then they got a message from Vault Tech the guys who ran the vaults uh, saying congratulations for uh, completing this experiment on what people vote for someone to die or would they just abstain and that did not go over well with the the survivors the five survivors it, it resulted in four of them unaliving themselves and the other one we don't know we don't know what happened to that person we don't know uh, if they we know that they weren't there in the vault by time the player goes to explore it. Um, there was also another vault, which does get mentioned in the show, of where they would get these families into the vault, uh, take away the parents, kill them, and leave just the kids to see how they got on. And then they, once they became of age, I believe they would kill them. This is where I get muddied on this, uh, but they would kill them or they would uh, those that didn't join uh the the scientists and security and all that um there was also another uh vault which did not last long because uh they would clone this guy named gary and it went bad uh to the point where his uh the clones uh which effectively was referred to as gary one uh would only repeat his name uh, and would be extremely hostile to anyone that wasn't a Gary. So that would keep going. So there's a ton of Gary clones uh, that they'd done. Um, and then they eventually overran the vault. And then over the years, I think only a select handful of Gary clones were left by the time you get, get to explore it. I think that one is, that was in fall, uh, Fallout 3. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but that's just like to name a, a few examples of some of the experiments that uh, went on uh, in some of the vaults in the Fallout games. Um, Tammy says streaming does have an impact on physical media sometimes. That it does. That it does. Like take the Orville for example. Uh, that only had uh, the first two seasons put out on physical. I'm not too sure if it got Blu-ray releases, but it definitely got DVD releases because I do have uh, season one and season two, but the third season has not released on physical. And uh, I think as well, like Sony has now taken over 
the distribution right, which I butchered saying that, uh, has taken over the rights to produce uh, physical media for Disney now because Disney have stopped doing them. Um, let's see, Tammy says, it reminds me of Picard with the androids that were banned. Yeah, the synthetics, yeah. There are actual synthetic androids in uh, the Fallout series. Uh, I just finished a mission last night in Fallout 3 all about hunting down this synthetic android uh, from the Commonwealth uh who escaped uh changed his face um went under facial reconstructive surgery and had his memories a waste or a waste a waste uh erased um and had uh new ones planted in him uh just to escape from his uh quote unquote owner who and the the android was actually one who would constantly go and capture escaped synthetics uh and then over co that course of time he got uh into his head that yeah i want to do that too and so we had to explore all of uh washington to find clues on that and so i went through the i played through the three different endings uh for that mission because there are three uh the first ending is you get contacted by someone from the railroad uh, who helps uh, since, since uh, escape and uh, basically says, you know, here's his component. Uh, go to the guy, Dr. Zimmer Zimmerman, who's looking for him and say, hey, look, uh, he I found him. He's dead. This is his part. And then you get like 50 caps for it because uh, the currency in uh, the Fallout series is bottle caps, um, which was not not an ending that I liked. Um, so that I went talked to the guy who did the reconstruction on him, uh, got more information, spent, I, I hate to say this, I spent ages trying to find the guy, uh, to the point where I just talked to Zimmerman, told him where he is, uh, followed Zimmerman to know who I was actually looking for. Uh, then I reloaded my save and got the save where I told the Android who he was resurfaced his memories. Uh, and then went and killed Dr. Z uh, Zimmerman. Uh, so that was the uh, outcome that I stuck with. And it was a, it was an interesting quest um, that didn't really like have any like quest markers. You just have to randomly stumble upon some stuff uh, out and about. Like you'd have to talk to some certain doctors uh, to see if they've heard anything. You know, they they all thought it was like uh, this big uh hoax type of situation but i am enjoying my playthrough of fallout 3 i i bought it like wednesday and i'm already like like i said 11 hours deep um but yeah uh that's <laughs> that's a huge tangent tangent that i've just gone on uh talking about um fallout because i had watched the fallout series um but yeah once i'm finished my first playthrough of fallout 3 I will be going to play new uh, back to play New Vegas. Um, so that so yeah, the Fallout TV series was a recent watch for me. Um, I haven't well, haven't really watched much outside of that because uh, you see, I am supposed to be working on next month's videos, um, which I have, but I've also kind of been working on some of June's videos. I think I have like two videos for June already filmed and scheduled to uh, to upload. Uh, but I can now say that uh, next month in May, I am going uh, back to do another trilogy month. Yes, so last August, I thought it was September, but no, after checking, it was August that I did the first ever trilogy month where I basically would, for those who watch the VOD afterwards who don't know or are currently are watching that don't know or don't remember, last August I did this thing called a Trilogy Month where on the Monday, Monday to Friday, which was my old upload schedule, I would review one of the movies in a specific trilogy. Um, and so I did that. It did moderate, moderately well to the point where I was like, I had fun doing this. Take a deep breath. Uh, I, I tend to do that sometimes. Uh, and I want, I would love to do it again. So I decided initially it was going to be April that I did it, but I decided against that uh, because of the 
April Fool's video that I posted at the beginning of the month that I had recorded back in August uh, of last year. And so I have been work. When I say I've been working on the trilogy month, I have one finished, uh, one trilogy finished. I have the two of the second trilogy finished. I just need to watch the third one. But unfortunately, I went to go watch it Friday. And my Blu-ray for it, uh, which I'll, I'll say what I'm reviewing in a second, uh, does not work. It keeps skipping. Uh, so I'm going to have to find an alternative means, which I probably will tonight, uh, to watch it. I also just need to be in the right headspace to to watch a near three hour film um and then i still uh, have then two more to do uh which i might do before i watch uh the third one in the in the movie and i'll just get to it uh before it's due out uh so what are the trilogies that i'm going to be covering uh i hear no one asking well the uh the first trilogy that i'm going to be doing is the dragon ball z broly films it's been a while since I rewatched them. Uh, it's actually been years since I rewatched them because the first time I watched them, I it was a marathon with my cousin, um, and so I was like, I have them in a triple pack. I may as well watch them, um, and so I did. Um, and I of course save my thoughts and opinions for when that review comes out. Um, the second trilogy, which will be a tales from my backlog, um, I decided it's about time that I watched the Nolan Batman films. So if you've been following my Instagram, you know whenever I watch a brand new movie for the first time, I will share what I ranked it on my Letterbox account, on my Instagram stories. Um, so yeah, that's the one where I just need to watch the third one of. So I have watched uh, Batman Begins and I have watched The Dark Knight. Um, so it's The Dark Knight Rises, my Blu-ray copy of that, that just doesn't work. Uh, well, it does, but it skips um, in the very beginning. So I need to um, I need to uh, find an alternative source for that one. But I do know that it's not the the out of the trilogy. It's the weakest one, from what I've been told. Um, but I do look forward to watching that at some point. I just need to be in the right he uh, headspace for that. So the trilogy after that is going to be uh, kind of continuing on from what I did. Uh, in the first trilogy month, and that is, I will be reviewing the uh, the prequel Star Wars trilogy. Yes, Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace, Attack of the Clones, and Return of the Jedi. I will be reviewing, and I've been thinking um, for the Phantom Menace, I might hold off on watching that for two weeks. Uh, why? Well, because uh, for the 25th anniversary of the film, for those who don't know, uh, it is coming back to cinema. Uh, like with a bunch of films that have been, you know, from the early 2000s have come back to cinema, like Trek 2, uh, the first Sam Raimi, um, I just dropped a comb, uh, the first uh, Sam Raimi Spider-Man film has been back in theatre. Uh, my local cinema is doing it. Uh, some of my Friends from CEX have invited me out to go watch it with them. Uh, so I might do that and I'll get a free poster with doing it. So that's kind of like my incentive of going because I, I kind of want the free poster. Uh, so I'll probably go have my first proper Star Wars cinema experience because I haven't seen any of the Star Wars films in cinema. And I do love The Phantom Menace. I have loved The Phantom Menace for the longest time. Um, I, it definitely does not deserve the hate that it gets. Um, uh, but that will be the third trilogy that I will be doing. The fourth trilogy and the, f the fourth and the final trilogy of next month that I will be reviewing is I'm taking it old school for me. Um, and we'll see how many people actually remember this, the series. I am going to be reviewing the Bionicle trilogy. Yes, uh, I'll be reviewing... Bionicle, The Mask of Light, Bionicle 2, The Legend of Mata Nui, and Bionicle 3, The Web of Shadows. Uh, it's been a series that I've been meaning ever since I bought them uh, back into the collection to rewatch. And I was like, fuck it, I may as well do it now. 
Um, so those are the four trilogies that I will be doing. May will not be the only trilogy month that I'll be doing this year. Sometime later on, uh, towards the end of this year, I will, of course, be doing my second wave of trilogy month. And the only ones that uh, only trilogy that I know for sure I'll be reviewing in that one because I haven't planned that far ahead uh, will be uh, obviously the Star Wars sequel trilogy to kind of wrap that up full circle. Um, so yeah, Tammy says I'm not lucky with CEX, so I'm just uh, buying online and charity shops and HMV. Um, I still find stuff in my local. Uh, CEX um, but it's mainly TV shows it's very rarely movies that I'll pick up like movies or Blu-rays it has to be like super super cheap for me to pick it up um, for me to want it um, uh, but it's it's been mainly like TV shows that I pick up because TV shows are cheap like big box sets like Will and Grace that's been like a, a cheap one uh, it's been there for the longest time and I might pick it up and uh, next week and that is season three of Futurama because I have season one I have season two and I have season four Um I just need season three and then of course to get the other seasons when I find them But that's one of my big problems with with my local CEX like some of the stuff that I need for my collection uh, Like TV series wise movie wise. I just don't find it and I just don't want to order online unless I have a voucher uh, because it's three euro and fifty cent for shipping uh, per item, which I always hate. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, we'll we'll see. We'll see. Uh, I'm I'm not. It's been actually. Yeah, I, I haven't done a, a Dublin trip um, since January. Uh, I have been kind of wanting to go back up to Dublin, but um, we'll just have to uh, wait and see. Uh, on that one, but if I do go up to Dublin, I won't film it. Uh, excuse me. Uh, just because I just don't feel like uh, filming for live DVD and Blu-ray hunts anymore. Um, it kind of got stale and repetitive for me. Um, so yeah, uh, Tammy says the Dark Knight trilogy are the best uh, trilogy. Um, so, yeah, well, you see, I'm not going to say what I thought of both um, of the first two in the Nolan trilogy. Um, I'm going to save that for the next one. But um, yeah, I I've been it's been on my backlog for a while. Uh, because I, growing up, I like I was a Batman fan, not necessarily for the like the Nolan fan, uh, Nolan Batman films. Like um, by that time, I didn't really care much for for Batman. For me, growing up, it was Batman and Superman, were, uh, not Superman, Batman and Spider Man were my go to, and X Men were my go to favorite uh, superheroes. Uh, mainly just for like the cartoons, like uh, Batman Beyond. Uh, Batman, Brave and the Bold, um, Teen Titans, I really enjoyed. Uh, I, of course, then whenever they were on, I would watch the uh, the rebroadcast of like the 90s, 90s Spider-Man. That's my Spider-Man, as well as, of course, the Sam Raimi Spider-Man trilogy. Um, and then also the 90s X-Men series. Which, no, uh, I haven't been watching X-Men 97. Uh, I just have way too much on my backlog and current watching to dedicate enough time to watch it um, every week. Uh, like, I, I have heard great stories, great, uh, great things about it, um, and I'm happy for that. I absolutely love that it's getting, uh, it's st still after 25 years, give or take. Um, uh, so no, sorry, 27 years. It's, yeah, it's been 20, 27 years. Um, because I'm 26, so I have to remind myself in that way that, um, it's been that long that people still love that series. And I was also really happy that they still use the, the proper theme song. I was a bit worried that, like, they weren't going to. Um, 
but yeah uh as well you know um big video big video came out yeah the, the gears of war video yes i'm i'm moving now on to the gears of war uh video that i posted um on the 8th uh of this month and how it was like my it is my first like big three hour long video um and the fact that it done so well i i was blown away and i'm still blown away you know um that my like i said it's my first big three hour long video i really did not expect it to go to do that well you know um i i as i was making it i was like as i saw it go progressively bigger it's like people aren't gonna watch this i love the video i thought it was fantastic i enjoyed the process of the three months of making it i really did um and then i was like i, I was I as was initially gonna drop on the 10th that's when i had in mind uh to post it um but then i was like as it got to that week i was like i kind of want to post it now and so i did i posted it i shared it around to some some places i shared it around to a few gears of war facebook groups that i was a part of um i also shared it on the gears of war um subreddit over on reddit and within less than 24 hours it got 100 views and then in a week it got 300 and like i know it's like sitting around i think last time i checked it's sitting around around 310 but still i'm very happy the fact that it got it done that well like it's my magnum opus that is going that will probably be the best video i will ever make on this channel and i love it i absolutely love and adore it like as i was work as i said as i was working on it i would watch back uh, when i finished a section and as it was going on i think i was thinking to myself this is a great video this is this is going to be like the best video i've i'll ever make you know and i love it i i really loved working on it so yeah i am working on a new one uh i am working on big video 2 electric boogaloo no i will not be announcing what that is uh you'll have to wait until uh june uh that's when i'll have a channel update where i'll confirm what i'm working on um as well as confirm it's uh when it will be coming out uh but i am working on it i have a i have 35 minutes of it already filmed scripted i'm already on the last section uh of of it uh but it will be a big section uh i can tell you that much uh so let's get back to some comments um so tammy says i love the 90s x-men uh we have sims collectibles uh saying hello from australia big fan of your channel and just wanted to say hey i also like uh your other vlog channel keep up the great work thank you sims um i have noticed that you mainly just post a uh, youtube shorts now because i am subscribed to you um so you do have some great content yourself uh, as you know for like star wars collectibles like i i am just jealous of some of the stuff you have like i think apart from like episodes one to six on blu-ray and uh, the only other star wars stuff i have is two lightsabers um will i go get them yeah fuck it, i'll go grab them because uh, they're not too far away to go grab so yeah okay these are my only two lightsabers that i have so we'll, i'll i'll show this off this was a gift this is luke's lightsaber this was a gift from a very close friend of mine um and i uh, absolutely love it uh it's one of those you know flick out ones and not one that i have like the ones i remember as a kid were the ones where you had to like hold down uh like a button and then flick but yeah it's a it's a really good lightsaber i'm just trying to move back so you can see um can i get it no i can't get it all in the frame uh but yeah i i love it it sits up on my big bookcase with my darth maul lightsaber but 
Um, I've, I love this. Uh, in my original uh, one, uh, thumbnail for my review for um, Empire and Return of the Jedi, is either, I think it was just Return of the Jedi, I used this for the original thumbnail. I have since obviously changed it to my new style of thumbnail, uh, but I love it. I will, I'm, this, if I am going to uh, Phantom Menace, I won't be bringing this with me. Uh, this, however, I will be bringing. This is my uh, Darth Maul lightsaber that I bought in uh, the Friday market, and it also uh, extends like so so this i probably will bring i need to like back up like really far just to like show you uh it so yeah whoops uh i paid five euro i'm not sure how well you can hear me uh back then uh but i paid uh five euro for this and i love it it sits next to my luke's lightsaber and like uh i love this I love the blade. I've always loved the uh, dual wielding lightsaber. Um, so, yeah. Uh, those are the only two lightsabers that I have in my collection. Um, but if I were to like collect lightsabers, I, I'd want the ones that I grew up on, like the ones that are like these. Um, but like not the lights light and sound ones because they as cool as they are they just they they're not what i grew up on these types of lightsabers were the ones i grew up on and i'll just put those off uh to the side here um as i get back to some comments um tammy says i'm looking forward to your six hour gears video uh there will not be it well when gear six comes out i might do a revisit to the franchise where I include Gears Tactics, ROM Shadow DLC, Hyper Busters DLC, and Gear 6. Um, because it is rumored that we're gonna hear something about it uh, in June. So uh, I also hope we hear something about the movie, you know, cause it's been, uh, November of 2022 was when it got announced that we were getting the Gears of War live action film as well as the animated series as well. Um, Tammy says, I sat through the whole three hours without a pause on the Gears video. Thank you very much for that, Tammy. I really uh, appreciate that. Um, but yeah, I really love making that video. Um, it's like, just like going over the whole lore stuff. Like, obviously I left stuff out. Uh, I purposely left stuff out. and But the way I framed it, the way I only revealed stuff when it was necessary to reveal it, you know. Um, I'm very happy and proud of how that video came out. Um, and I probably will do another heavy lore-based video very, very soon. Not, not, well, we'll see how things go because how I'm, how I'm thinking of doing these uh, is um these scripted videos is uh for well just for like game for like franchises that i love like gears of war skyrim you know that type of stuff um i will like i will do it one at a time you know i don't want to work on multiple at a time and you know churn it out very very fast i'm happy with taking however many months it takes to finish that video because I enjoyed that process. I would like to bring that more, like have that as the primary focus for the channel. But because of the way I've done things and how long these videos would take, I don't think I'm there yet to do that. Um, but we'll see, we will see. Uh, Tammy says, I'm uh, I'm watching the Gears movie if it, it's cinema, so will I. But it's Netflix that's doing it. So I think it's uh, just gonna be on Netflix. So. We'll see. But then again, you know, this isn't the first time we've had word of a Gears of War movie uh, over the entire franchise's existence of nearly 20 years. Um, so I just hope and pray that we do hear something. Um, so 
yeah, let's. Uh, I still have two two more topics uh, here to talk about as we are approaching the hour mark. Um, so let's start Star Trek. We'll we'll go with Star Trek before I go into the next one because, as I said at the beginning of stream, for those who weren't here, the main reason why I wanted to do this stream was because of a video I tried to film that I just wasn't in the right headspace for. And that is, I am worried about the future of Star Trek. Um, so in case you don't know, when uh, Strange New Worlds got renewed for a fourth season, uh, it was also announced that uh, Lower Decks was getting its fifth and final season that it was canceled, essentially. Paramount went to them at some point, uh, I'm not sure when, and said to them, look, we're just not going to move forward with you. Um, so that has me worried for twofold. One, because there's not much Star Trek left. You know, uh, we're, we're no longer in the golden age of Star Trek. We're in the, oh crap, what's going to happen uh, era of Star Trek. You know, uh, we have, we do have projects you know, we have season three of uh, Strange New Worlds has either finished filming or is uh, still working on uh, still working on it. Uh, that also, as I said, got renewed for a season four. Uh, Discovery, which is currently airing, got cancelled after they finished filming for season five to the point where they literally have to go back to do reshoots to give us an ending. Um, because they it wasn't in, in the cards yet. Um, and then, uh, so then, as I said, Lower Decks is ending. We don't know if that, when they were told that, and if we're going to get an, a satisfying ending, or if it's going to end on a cliffhanger, because that's the, that's the way um, Lower Decks likes to do things, where they end, uh, since season two, they end things on a cliffhanger. Uh, so we will, We'll have to wait and see. But now once that's done, we still have season two of Star Trek Prodigy. Um, that is coming at some point. We know it was released in France uh, early, um, but no word on Netflix releasing season two yet. Uh, and we don't even know if, there, if it's going to get a season three. Um, Let's see what else. Yeah, we also have then, of course, the Long Trek Section 31 film, which has finished filming, which is set during the lost era of Star Trek, uh, thanks to a Vanity Fair article, um, which also confirmed that uh, we are going to see a young Rachel Garrett before captain captaining uh, the Enterprise C. Um, and then after that, we have, of course, the Section 31 young adult series, which should be starting filming soon, uh, which they have. They said that in that Vanity Fair article that they built this massive set for uh, the Starfleet Academy. Um, but yeah, and then of course uh, we have the JJ Trek Four, which has been in development hell for ages, constantly losing writers, losing directors, and all that stuff. So I'll believe we get that film when it's out. You know that that's how bad it's been for for me not giving a rat's ass about JJ Trek Four, and then of course they said that we're also getting a sequel, uh, uh, or not a sequel, a prequel to the Calvin Trek films, which we still don't know if that's set after the destruction of the USS Calvin or before. Because if it's set before, that's that's prime timeline. If it's set afterwards, then it is Calvin. So. Then once all that's done, you know, we don't know what's coming next. And uh, not only that, Paramount has been looking for a bigger company to buy them. Um, you know, and there are two companies that I know that I've seen uh, uh, through the grapevine that are looking to purchase it. Skydance and Sony. Um, so I'm worried that if, if these big com one of these two big companies does buy it, or any big company buys Paramount, what does that mean for Star Trek? Because if history has taught me one thing, when 
a big company buys another big company, usually any project they have been working on before the, the, the purchase gets canceled. So does that mean, say if Skydance or Sony or Disney, I highly doubt Disney, um, but just to use it as an example, buys out Paramount. Does that mean we're going to lose Star Trek? Uh, that they're going to cancel Star Trek? And uh, are they going to see it as a worthwhile investment continuing Star Trek? Or if they're going to reboot everything, you know, um, from, you know, reboot it all from scratch? Uh, you know, um, I just don't know. And I'm worried. I'm worried about that, you know. I am worried that we are heading back towards another long stretch in a gap of Star Trek content. I really am. Um, with the way these shows keep getting cancelled, you know, uh, Star Trek Picard has was always slated to be three seasons. That's fine. He, Sir Patrick Stewart is old. Um, we cannot deny that, you know. Uh, so three, I'm happy we got three seasons. I loved all three seasons, despite what fans say. I have loved Star Trek Picard from beginning to end. I do need a rewatch because I've only watched through season one and season two and season three once, but that's for a future big video. Um, but I and I have loved Discovery. I and most of my Discovery reviews uh, of season five have always stated I am a Discovery apologist because uh, I love Discovery. I'm sad that's ending. I'm sad that we're not getting the true ending we deserve. But then again, I haven't seen what ending we are getting, so I can't necessarily say for certain if that if we sh uh, is it the true ending that we deserve. Um, and it's going to be the same with lower decks, as I said. Yes, they are no longer lower deckers. They are lieutenant junior grade. Um, but still, it's a show that I loved uh, that took a while to get into. It was the end of season one when I got into it. So I, I can't help but be worried about a show that I have loved for so long, you know, that I poured so much love and time and energy into to see it go back to the way it was when I got into Star Trek. So I got into Star Trek during the wilderness years uh, where um, it was only the, the only new Star Trek that we were getting was the Kelvin films. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's all I got to say about my my fears for Star Trek as a whole. So let's get uh, back to some of these comments. Uh, so Tammy says, "I'm worried about Star Trek uh, too. They keep canceling shows since Enterprise NX. Yes, you know this this is now the fourth uh, Star Trek series to be canceled with Lower Decks. You know it was TOS and Enterprise were the only two that had gotten canceled, and now we can add." Discovery and Lower Decks, unfortunately, to that mix. And that um, that sucks. Uh, as a fan of both series, that really does suck. Um, Sim Collectible says, uh, collecting items for nostalgia reason is so much more fulfilling over time. I have a pretty decent range of vintage toys packed away, but they are more valuable to me than some of my high-end stuff. And I agree. I 100% agree with you. Like, um, some of the stuff that I have uh, on my displays um, have more meaning to me than than most things. Like, my take my Doctor Who figures, for example. A lot of my Doctor Who figs I have owned for so long. Like, through my, uh, when I was a kid, to my teenage years. Uh, I wonder if I have here. No, it's, uh, yes, actually, I do. And I just bump into my CRT like an idiot, forgetting that it was there. Like, you know, last month I bought that and I still have no idea where the fuck to put it. But this, this Krillitang is, this Krillitang figure here is one of my last surviving original Doctor Who figures uh, that I remember getting Christmas Day 2006. I mean, yeah, it's seen worse for wear. It's, it is missing its wings. Luckily, I do have one that has the wings, uh, which, where did I put, oh yeah, it's that side, that side of me, whoops, uh, let me just move, you can kind of see it, I'll just go grab it, like, this is how this looked when I bought it, like, when I got it for Christmas, but this was gift a gift for me, uh, from a friend, um, but, 
going into stuff like this, this is the oldest toy that I've had. Oldest toy slash key ring that I've had since I was a kid. Like, I got this in 2000. Um, yeah, 2000 slash 2001 from a long gone toy store uh, in Ireland called World of Wonder. And I have had it for years. And I would love to collect more toys, but it's just a case of eBay is my only option, uh, unfortunately, for a lot of this stuff. And then, of course, if it's coming from England, I'm going to be hit with import fees and high postage. So it's just not worth it then. Uh, so it's just whenever I find it out and about, and I do look for toys when I'm out, when I'm going hunting for, for stuff, to see stuff that I might have had as a kid or might want as a display piece. Um, but yeah, stuff like uh, like this Krillitang and the uh, this Power Ranger keychain have so much sentimental value to me that I would never get rid of these at all. Um, they they mean more more to me than some of the stuff that I've bought specifically for the collection. Um, so yeah, uh, Tammy says they tried to do Enterprise Annex on Earth, didn't end well. Uh, I can see the Academy going the same way. Um, well, it is. We know that the Star Trek Academy is centered towards um, young adults. Uh, so yeah, I can see it going the way of Prodigy where initially Prodigy was canceled after the first season, but after a huge fan outcry that it got the second season. Uh, well, well, they were still working on the second season. That's when they got canceled. Um, so yeah, we have a uh, sinister media, a college friend of mine saying Star Trek, because that's the way he likes to say it. Uh, what's good? Uh, hope you're doing well, my man. Uh, so Daddy says, my B&M don't sell Doctor Who figures anymore. That's another thing. B&M is really the only place to get doc new Doctor Who figs. Uh, we don't have that in Ireland. If I want, well, we do up north, but that would be a case of actually going up north uh, just to get some Doctor Who figs or to hope that they actually have some Doctor Who figs, uh, which is the annoying thing. Uh, so I'd have to buy off of eBay. And then that goes back to the case of, I'm going to need uh, to take out and uh, to sell a kidney or something because of the postage and the import fees. Um, Sinister says, uh, "Should we get a prequel Doctor Who from before he got his Doctor called Mister Who?" Um, technically, technically, we we have seen some stuff, early stuff in the Doctor's life. Uh, we've heard some things as well. Uh, so. I mean, it would be interesting to see the Doctor in the Division, you know, uh, as um, as the Ruth Doctor or a Doctor that we don't know about, you know, because there's still, because of the whole Timeless Child thing, we still don't know a lot of uh, the Doctor's regenerations. Um, Danny says, I have the Digivice from back in the day. I... Uh, I've I remember having that. I just don't have it. Uh, how I even remember getting a big plushy Agumon um, that I completely forgot all about. I remember getting that, um, and I love that plush. I still I actually bought like one of the movies that I was really looking for when I got into collecting three years ago was the Digimon movie because uh, Digimon was one of the uh, anime slash cartoons that. I grew up on that my mother also loved. She really loved Digimon, so that was something that we definitely bonded over as a kid. Um, so we have Giovanni here saying, I play Star Trek Online, have been playing since 2013. Do I play STO? I go through phases where I do replay through STO, um, and but like I ha do have a profile where I'm like level 37 captain, but the main reason why I don't continue to play is because I'm, I I hate the mandatory missions where you have to play online. I am a solo gamer. I like solo storytelling games uh, where I just want... So whenever I do play um, Star Trek Online, I want to be left alone to go do my own thing. 
but I also play on the Xbox One, and it's like super laggy and super janky, uh, that it keeps putting me off. Um, see, when I started playing STO was back in 2016 when the uh, the 2401 timeline, which is now 2409, um, had the Klingon War mission uh, had like 20 missions, um, and then it just pared it down to six. Which I hate because those 20 missions were so fun. I really enjoyed doing those. Um, but yeah, uh, keep an eye out though. Uh, I might I might be doing some uh, uh, some STO content. Uh, Giovanni also says always. Uh, anyways, greetings from uh, Darwin, Australia. Hello. Well, thank you for coming in. I have noticed you uh, be like a recent subscriber since I started doing my Star Trek Discovery review. So thank you for that. Um, I have reviewed all 13 uh, at this point Star Trek films. Um, I, in, case you, like, in case you don't know, I have a big controversial Star Trek take of, uh, I think the Wrath of Khan is overrated and Star Trek First Contact is my favorite film of all time. Well, not my favorite film of all time, but my favorite Star Trek film. It's my second favorite film of all time. My favorite film of all time being Howl's Moving Castle. My third favorite film being uh, was originally Nowhere Boy, but I think The Truman Show dethroned that. Uh, so I'd, I'd definitely say The Truman Show is my um, would be my third favorite film of all time. Uh, Tammy says, uh, I may need to sell a kidney with prices going up. Well, yeah. Like, like since I got my CRT, uh, TV. One of the things that I really want um, is Star Trek First Contact on VHS. I've seen, you know, it's on eBay and stuff, but because of Brexit, uh, prices, like postage uh, is ridiculous. Like I found a seller selling it for like four euro. Great price. I'll happily pay four euro for it. But then it's 15 euro postage and then I also run the risk of um, getting hit with import fees, and I don't know how much I'd get hit with import fees because it could be two euro, could be four euro, could be a hundred euro. I don't know because a friend of mine uh, he collects Ariana Grande stuff because he's a massive Ariana Grande fan. Like he he spent thousands of euro on on some of that stuff, and like re like twice he's paid like over two three hundred euro. For some new Ariana Grande stuff that's come out, and he's then also then being hit with an extra hundred euro import fees, like uh, it, it's import fees are like that crazy. That's why I you don't see me buying off of eBay um, at all. Like I think the last thing I bought was when I was still building up my um, my modern Doctor Who collection. Um, so Giovanni says, okay, I play on PC. Uh, hi, uh, First Contact is my uh, number one also. Great to hear. Uh, I did, uh, a re I have a review for it out, but I also did uh, last year, uh, last summer, I did a live watch party with a f uh, friend of mine, Gareth, over at Video Tasties. That live stream is still exists on this channel. Um, Tammy says... Uh, gaming is so expensive. CEX have increased price. Yes, they have. Like, um, uh, it's why. Like, uh, my main example to go to of like how expensive games have gone is uh, the Simpsons Hit and Run on PlayStation Two and Xbox. Um, over here, it's thirty-five euro, uh, which is mental. Like, yes, it is a great game. Yes, it. Uh, so. But still, it, it doesn't need to be 35 euro, you know? Um, that, that's just, like, my take on it. Like, um, but, yeah, it just doesn't need to be all that expensive. Like, the pandemic was the main reason why a lot of game gaming systems and games just shot up in price. Uh, you know, graded games, inherited auctions, you know, price gouging sealed um graded games was another fucking reason i am in southern ireland um i live near dublin uh, i'm about 
uh, 45 minute to an hour bus ride away from Dublin. Um, it just depends on on traffic, I suppose, and if it's uh, which way it's going. If it's going the motorway, the motorway, it'll be uh, take less time. But if I'm going the old way, um, it will take a little bit of time. Um, Tammy says I used to sell on eBay, but with eBay fees, not worth it. I have sold a few things on on eBay. Um, I sold some video games actually that I. Uh, rare, uh, some rare games that I managed to find um, on there, but that was way before uh, CEX here done uh, PS1 games. Now they do, and they recently started doing Game Boy Advance games, um, which that is like it, they want like 85 euro for a Game Boy Advance, not an SP, mind you. So that's that's wild um, for like prices over here um so sim collectible says never get rid of them i regret i regret getting rid of my old he-man toys yep i'm old hey i mean i i used to have like a bunch of power ranger toys that i loved uh as a kid uh they were like ninja storm spd um i had a few of the uh flip head ones where you'd you know you'd crank the legs and they'd change from helmet to civilian head that I've gone, like I, like I said, I, I had a bunch of Power Ranger toys that I was forced to get rid of. You know, I was still using them. And, you know, I was still playing with them for, like, Doctor Who and stuff. And, and I was forced to get rid of them. And that sucks. Like, I've managed to find two in, like, my, like, just out and about um, that I've gotten back and then I bought, I found some that I never even owned, like Power Range toy lines. That when I see them and they're cheap, I pick them up. Um, but yeah, it's been it's been a while since I actually found anything toy related that I need. But yeah, like my like uh, the the Doctor Who collection I have now, I will never get rid of. Uh, yes, I do have duplicates, uh, but even then, I wouldn't get rid of them. Uh, maybe to like give them to like a friend. Um, because I know then if I give it to a friend, I'm I could, if I want them back, I might still get them back. Um, so eighty Australian dollars. Um, that uh, Tammy says uh, it was so cheap before the pandemic. Even PS2 console then was twenty five pound. Now eighty. Yeah, it's about a hundred euro over here for for one. I remember getting the or the fat PS2 on Facebook Marketplace for a tenner. Um uh back in 2016 uh when i collected um 20 2013 2016 um but yeah like it it's gone up massively like that's why i i like collecting for the xbox 360 because they are relatively cheap um compared to uh like PlayStation because the, it, it goes like for collecting it goes it goes in ways for for games like right now GameCube is like the hottest thing to collect for because people who grew up on the GameCube uh GameCube and people who never grew up on the GameCube GameCube if I can fucking talk um realize just how great of a console it was you know it didn't sell well originally uh but now it's like whatever like it's everyone's after that um and yeah um oh cool uh Killarney yeah that's actually uh Killarney 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 I'm trying to remember where I think I might have been to Killarney um I am familiar with it obviously uh I can't remember if I've been to Killarney or not hmm my memory gets muddled from time to time um Came to Australia as convicts. Uh, family surname used to be uh, Carney. Interesting, yeah. Um, like my my surname has changed. The well, the spelling of it has changed. Like uh, for my when my granddad was growing up um, up in Nobber, uh when he went to a Catholic school, which were known as the Brothers um, back then. Um, the spelling of my last name used to be B-U-R-D uh, until they 
spell it into him to spell it B-I-R-D. And then me and my mother changed it to B-Y-R-D. Uh, so yeah, there, there's three different versions of how to spell, spell my last name uh, among the family. Um, but yeah, I, I, I mean, I get the, the, that they, the change. Um, and then Tammy says, I was forced to get rid of uh, loads of childhood toys as we had to move, but it's too pricey to buy the Mac. Exactly. That's why I don't. Like, I would love to buy more Power Ranger toys that I had. Um, hell, even Megazords, but like, and Morphers. It's just way too expensive for no goddamn reason. Um, like, a Morpher that I would want that I never had was the Lightspeed Rescue Morpher, because that was the Ranger season I got into Power Rangers with. Um, and like it's like selling for like a hundred euro on eBay for just the morpher. And then I wanted to get the Megazord because I remember having the Megazord. I, I have footage of me getting the Megazord for Christmas as the only surviving family footage I have um, on, hell, I even have it right next to me, um, on this very VHS tape has the last of my family memories. Uh, well, most of them, like a lot of them got lost to time, but this has like from 2000 to 2003, 2004. Um, but yeah, uh, I remember the only Christmas footage that's on there is of me getting that Megazord for Christmas. Um, and not only that Megazord, I also had uh, Tracy Island from Thunderbirds. Uh, I got that that Christmas as the one of two times that I ever owned Tracy Island. And um, I remember like the first time I rewatching it, that footage in years, I was saying to myself, if I was back there in that moment, I would go straight for the Megazord. And then I watched myself do the exact same thing as, as I was said I would do. Like I would do now that I did back then, which was go straight for the Megazord. Fuck everything else I got for Christmas. I have the Lightspeed Megazord, and it's not the first time that I, uh, you know, got Megazords and Morphers. I also got a, a bunch um, of uh, stuff over the years. Like I had the, let's see, what Morphers did I had? I definitely had, yeah, I had Ninja Storm. I had, um, I had Dino Thunder. I had. Uh, uh, SPD and Mystic Force was the last Power Ranger Morphin that I had. And I would love to get those back because I have, like, I remember going up to Dublin with my mother. I think she was getting a tattoo. Um, and that's when I got the Ninja Storm Morpher. Uh, I think my dad bought me the Dino Thunder Morpher. I forget who got me the, the SPD Morpher. And I forget how I got the Mystic Force Morpher. Uh, but Mystic Force was when I stopped watching Power Rangers. But I still obviously kept up with it over the years. Um, and I would still cast myself as a Power Ranger fan now. Um, but yeah, I definitely wish I'd get those back as well as the toys. Uh, the Power Ranger toys, the Megazords. Hell, I even had the fucking uh, Q-Rex Megazord from Time Force. I think I even had the Time Force Morpher. I can't remember. Um, did I have the... No, I never had the Wild Force Morpher. I had the costume. Uh, for sure. I'm just remembering. I'm trying to remember all this shit that I used to have. Um, but hell, I even remember going back to like Doctor Who-wise. I remember one Christmas... The, the, the Christmas 2006, after I'd gotten into the show, the Christmas prior, um, with a Christmas invasion. Um that my mom went mad for getting me Doctor Who stuff. Like the entire sitting room was full of it, full of nothing but Doctor Who. Um, I, I, and I can remember it clear as day. I even had the, the TARDIS wardrobe, um, which I never really used as a wardrobe. I used it as a place to store my toys in just one corner of my bedroom. 
Uh, and then I saw a spider in it. And then I never went back into it uh, after that. Yeah. That, that's how serious I get with my spiders. If I see a spider uh, in a place, the chances are I'm not going back into that place anytime soon. Um, but yeah, I do wish, and I would love to get, like I said, I would love to get all those stuff back. But it's it's the the fucking price of it all that uh, that prevents me from doing it. Uh, Giovanni says, uh, "Yep, Irish convict uh, heritage, and uh, I'm proud of it." Don't consider it the Irish convicts uh, stain. Uh, bird like Larry Bird, the NBA player. Um, no, it's just what I just, I don't even remember when we switched it to BYOD. Um, that's just like what I've I've always gone by. I'm trying to because I have like a big like little something that I've had for ages. I wonder if I can. Uh, yeah, that I've had ever since I was a kid. It said, you know, has my name, what, when I was born, where I was born, um, and like how much I weighed. I was a nine pound baby for, for those who actually give the last ask. Doubt many do. But yeah, um, I don't remember when we, we switched to BYOD. Uh, but yeah. Um, but that, yeah, no, it's, uh, it was just, I think, randomly, I, I guess. Um, we got AJ in the house. Hi, AJ. Hope you're doing well. Um, hope your Sunday is going well. Mine's been fine. We've been live for an hour and 21 minutes, and I have talked quite a bit about a whole bunch of stuff. And I don't think I'll stop anytime soon. I think I might go for the full two hours here. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll see how much they people get me to ramble on about stuff. Um, so Tammy says, I, I still got Tracy Island, still works too. Um, I remember when Jonathan Frakes directed uh, the live action Thunderbird film from the early 2000s, which I didn't realize it was him until much later on, obviously. Um, but I remember going to see that film in cinema and I loved it. I haven't rewatched it since, um, like in over 20 years at this point. But I then remember going to see it up in Blanchestown. Um, and then afterwards, going out to Burger King, uh, because Burger King, you know, were giving out some uh, Thunderbird toys, and I remember getting one that I did that I, uh, not that I didn't want, but it wasn't the one I wanted. You see, my favorite Thunderbird is Thunderbird Two. Don't know why. It's just always been my favorite one. Um, and so then my mother then uh, went up and bought the rest, bought all five of them for me. Um, so that's always been like a, a, a favorite memory of mine from whenever I think of Thunderbirds, I think of that. Um, but I would definitely would love to get not the the new newer uh, Tracy Island that they've done, but I want that Tracy Island. Um, so Giovanni asks, you okay with the current direction of Doctor Who? Some Whovians say it's too woke now. I, you see, I, I'm still going to watch, you know, I still plan to do uh, my, to continue reviewing uh, the Shooty Got Was run. I didn't like the Star Beast when it aired. Um, I loved Wild Blue Yonder. I loved uh, The Giggle and I loved um, The Church on Ruby Rose, Ruby Road. Um, I did not like the Whitaker era. Uh, even after two rewatches, and I'll probably still feel the same after a third rewatch at some point. Uh, but I still stuck through it because you see, Doctor Who for me has has been a show I have loved for over twenty years, and I've poured a lot of time, a lot of eff effort, and a lot of blood, sweat, and tears over. And it's not a show that I'm ready to give up on. Um. It's a show that I even I'll like. I'll watch. I'll still continue to watch, even if I don't like it. I, I think I'll still continue to watch, like with the Whitaker era and like with Supernatural. Um, whether or not I'll continue to review it, if if I don't like it, we'll we'll see. Um, but uh, I'll see how how things go. Like I said, I didn't like the the way he did the Star Beast. Uh, Russell did the Star Beast. I'm not too happy with the fact that he's writing 
six out of eight of the episodes for season one, uh, as I mentioned early on uh, in the stream. Um, so it's a it's a I'll play it by ear. We'll see how season one goes. Uh, whether or not I review season two is yet to be seen. Um, but I think I'll still review it, and the completionist in me will continue to buy it. Uh, that that's for sure. Um, Tammy asks if it is okay. Uh, plenty of big spiders here in Australia. Yeah, why do you think I don't <laughs> I don't go there? You know, uh, I hate spiders. Spiders just no. Me and spiders are uh uh that that's a no go. Like I have seen how big spiders get in Australia, and there's two reasons why I don't go to Australia. That and an X. Uh, spiders being the main one. That and I'm not too fussed about snakes. Um, I held a snake once in 2008, and they, they just don't bother me all that much. Um, I'd be more worried about waking up in the middle of the night to a fucking kangaroo staring me down, and then randomly starting attacking me for no fucking reason. Now, that's something I have heard. Ha ha not necessarily. Uh, waking up next uh, with a kangaroo staring down at you, but I have heard kangaroos like love to start fights for no reason um, and so uh, Thanks for sharing that mate. No problem um, Tammy asks have I watched uh, Buffy the vampire slayer yet? I grew up on Buffy. I haven't watched every episode, but I grew up on Buffy I grew up on Buffy. I grew up on Angel um and I grew up on Charmed, the original Charmed, not the terrible remake of Charmed. Um, and I need, I, I've been meaning to add Buffy, Angel, and Charmed into my collection. But CEX, where I live, they want like 10 euro, 15 euro a season. Uh, so I'm not all that pushed to add them in for right now. Uh, but yeah, it, it was a show that I... I got into because of my mother. And a lot of the shit that I got into was because of my mother. Star Trek, Doctor Who, um, Vampires, uh, just to name a few, uh, were ones that I definitely got into because of my mother. Um, so Giovanni says, Doctor Who, uh, given his pronouns to the alien, put me off. Yeah, that, that's one that I definitely rolled my eyes at um, for the Star Beast. Uh, I definitely rolled my eyes at that bit. And I, wa I wasn't too keen on uh, Donna and Rose uh, saying that, oh, if you were still a woman, you would have figured it out by now. That didn't sit well with me. Uh, but like I said, it's a show I, put, I poured a lot of time into that I'm not ready to say goodbye to yet. Um, uh, maybe, maybe I will, maybe I won't. I don't know. There's been times where I have thought of, you know, not continuing watching Doctor Who during uh the, the the during the Moffat era um but yeah i have you know i've, re I've reviewed full seasons of seasons one to ten i did do a review for uh seasons one to flux sorry season 11 to flux of jody whittaker's era uh that was one of my for my early early videos that i done uh i'm thinking of taking that down and redoing it because I didn't do it in the style that I did uh, for seasons two to ten. Uh, season one was scripted. Uh, so was kind of the um, that Whitaker video. Uh, but I did it where I reviewed every episode in ten words or less. Uh, and like it, it just wasn't great. Uh, pro after stream, I'll probably just take it down, uh, to be quite honest with you. Uh, Whitaker era only watched one episode. There are some really good Whitaker episodes, in my honest opinion. Uh, excuse me. Um, so for like season, series 11, my favorite episode is It Takes You Away. Um, there are bits that aren't great about that episode, but it was one that I remember really liking when it aired. Um, Rosa was another fantastic uh, episode uh that they've done the, my only gripe with that the, that episode is the ending with the whole stupid pop song um for series 12 there are some good episodes like um let's see fugitive of the jadoon was fantastic i loved it um the haunting of villa da dati uh was another is another just 
masterclass of an episode. It made the Cybermen scary again for a short period of time. Um, but and then Flux, I actually enjoyed more of Flux than I did of the the vast majority of uh, Jody's run, to be quite honest with you. Um, but yeah, I have been thinking for like months and months and months now of like re redoing that original video because uh, I'm just not happy with it. You know, it was early days on the channel. I didn't have like a, a decent enough mic. Um, I sure as shit didn't have my phone now, which is the phone I'm, I'm using to stream this on is a Google Pixel 6. And I was thinking of, of upgrading to a Pixel 7, uh, but then I compared the camera quality and this looked better. Um, so yeah, uh, where I live are saltwater and freshwater crops. Huh. Florida 2.0. That's all I gotta say. It's, it sounds like Florida 2.0. Land of Croc Dundee. Uh, I never actually watched those films. You see, I I only heard of Crocodile Dundee um, through How I Met Your Mother. So I just thought it was an in-universe film for that. Come to realize that, no, it's an actual film series. So yeah, I definitely need to give Crocodile Dundee a, a, a looky-loo at some point. My backlog's massive. Uh, for to to do stuff like to eventually get to it, but but the way I'm thinking of doing tackling movie franchises in the future, maybe I might actually do it more uh, sooner than you think. Uh, and that is the end of my second bottle of BPM. Excuse me. All right, let's get let's get back to some comments here. Um, Tammy says it took a while to get the Buffy VHS collection, but I will watch it all on VHS eventually. I do want to get more VHS, um, because I put my collection. I am happy with it. I'm happy to have certain films on VHS. Like I'm happy to have um, Trial of a Time Lord on VHS, brand new, never used. Um. And well, when I say never used, I tested them properly, tested them, so they are now technically used. Uh, but like, if I were to like watch, do like my classic Doctor Who review for Trial of a Time Lord, I will more than likely end up watching it on VHS compared to the DVD copy that I have, you know. Um, but I definitely do want to get more VHS. I have seen there is an Irish seller who has certain Star Trek episodes, mainly Voyager on VHS uh, for like 10 each. Uh, maybe some are like a little bit more, some a little bit less, but free postage. So maybe I might buy one, maybe I don't. Uh, I've been hemming and hawing about it ever since I got that TV. Um, uh, yeah, the gray ones uh, and uh, Central Aussies, big red ones uh, get aggressive. Yeah, I, I, I've seen videos. Uh, phone, I thought you were using a PC. No, uh, my laptop is a four year old hunk of junk and uh, can barely run things without the CPU jumping straight up to a 100. So, uh, mo all of my live streams have really been using my phone through, as you can tell, uh, StreamYard. Let me just get it, yeah, right there, StreamYard. Um, and uh, I just uh, Load it up on the phone, and uh, that's how that's how I've always done it. Like before, I used like for a while, uh, I used my old phone because it had it still has a headphone track, and I have a, a headset, a mic headset, which the, the sound quality on it is fucking amazing. Like uh, when it gets to like the gear, like going back to the Gears of War video, uh, when I'm using the uh, with the gameplay over it, that's what I'm using that uh, that headset. Um, but then I just went back to this because it's not as straight. Like before, it used to drain. Uh, like two hours would like nearly kill this phone. Um, like I've been going up for like an hour and nearly thirty five minutes in about ten seconds, and it was at like eighty percent when I when I booted it up. It's now at thirty four percent. Um, so 
I also need to get the charge report fixed again. Uh, charge reports for me with phones is I'm always fucking running into issues with them. Uh, Tammy says, aren't phone cameras better than laptops for filming? Yes, they are. Because um, this, the front-facing camera on, on my Pixel 6 here is in 1080p. If I was to do it from the back-facing camera, but then I wouldn't be able to read chat, um, uh, records up into 4K. Um, the only way to get like a decent enough quality for a laptop or even PC is by using a um, webcam, a streaming webcam. Because there are webcams that they're designed for, you know, Twitch and and all that stuff. Uh, they do get expensive as as things go up. Uh, as as you want better quality uh, for for what you want. But yeah, main all all my videos have been filmed on my phone and have been filmed on my I've been filming YouTube videos on my phone for let's see we're in what about yeah about 13 years yeah it's been yeah it's been about nearly 13 years since I first started my my you my original YouTube channel years and years and years ago back when I was in um uh when I was in first year in secondary school or high school for for those who aren't in Ireland. Um, so yeah, I've been posting videos since I was 14. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, shit. It's been, uh, fuck, it's been, I'm, I'm old when it comes to YouTube. I remember when you used to be able to rate videos from one to five stars before likes came about. And you could be friends with people on YouTube and send people messages and uh, add stuff to your favorites. Yeah, I'm that old when it comes to YouTube. Uh, I'm an ancient fart uh, in internet years. Um, Tammy says I'm having trouble with storage for my uh, Google Pixel. I don't um, because I don't keep stuff on my phone for very long. Like video-wise and picture-wise, I'll uh, if it's not needed, I'll delete it. Um, uh, and then I will just, uh, or I might just transfer it onto the laptop. Um, so yeah. So the final thing really to talk about that I have on, you know, my, my streaming topics, I need to cover up something because that's topics for a channel update video that I'll be doing uh, in June. Um, is so what I've just kind of wanted to do, um, which I, I suppose I will mention this because it will be mentioned again in June, um, where uh, since the success of that Gears of War video, I have decided that whilst I'm working on Big Video 2, uh, to see how well the, this new concept is going to go. Uh, where I will take something that I have, um, so I like I'll take an old bit of content and kind of repurpose it into a long video. So tomorrow is the first of that test. Um, we have so tomorrow I'm going to be I taken my first time watch through reviews of Star Trek the original series seasons one, two, and three uh, that I did last summer. Uh, I have now re-edited, well, not necessarily re-edited, but I've edited them all together for, like, one big video. Um, I, so tomorrow I'll have that up. It's an hour and 40 minutes, not three hours like the Gears of War video. Uh, and depending on how that does, I might do more of that where I'll take, say, uh, the all, when I reviewed all 13 Star, uh, Star Trek films. I'll edit them all together in one big video. Um, I'll do that for, the, like, say, the Doctor Who's, where I'll edit all together the Russell T. Davies era one uh, stuff, you know, from season one to four plus specials as one big giant video. Um, and then, you know, do the same with the Russell era and so on and so forth. Um, and I'll just see how that does as, like, maybe extra videos, you know, um, because after May, when I go back to my old uh, upload schedule, uh, it will be back to Mondays and Fridays with the occasional extra video. So that might be an occasional extra video, but we'll see how well that does tomorrow. 
Um, so Giovanni says, I just told a, a mate about your channel as he loves the Thunderbirds. I really need to rewatch it. Like I, I want to rewatch the the original Thunderbirds uh, show as well as um, I want to rewatch the Thunderbirds film that Jonathan Frex directed uh, from 2000. Uh, I just need to find the time for it and actually buy them on physical uh, because I, I like to have my things on physical. Uh, I don't have any streaming services at all. So if I'm watching something, usually it's been pulled from behind me. Um, Giovanni also says, yeah, I remember a five-star rating system. I remember Sheldon Cooper got upset when they got rid of the five-star ratings. They should have kept the Danfo button. 100% they should have kept the Danfo button because that would have saved so many, so much time on tutorial videos that lead to absolute nothing. Um, they, uh, because now we don't really know. We have to scroll down to the comments to see if these tutorial videos are actually worth a rat's ass. Um, but we all know that the reason they got rid of the downvotes is because, well, they became one of the most downvoted uh, videos out there, which was 2018 YouTube Rewind. Um, so, yeah, uh, they 100% should. Like, I know on my laptop I have an extension downloaded uh, to see dislikes. Um, because even on YouTube Studio, on the phone, it's really hard to see if you have any dislikes. You have to go into your analytics and go over to engagement, I believe. Um, and then you'll see like the like, like the percentage of likes to uh, likes dislikes to your channel average. So if it's one if it says one hundred percent, then you have all likes um, or dislikes, I guess. But I've never had anything that's been more disliked than liked. Um, and compared to your channel average. So my, I think my channel average for likes to dislikes is 97.6%. But that's because of YouTube Shorts. Um, because a lot of uh, YouTube Shorts is where I get the vast majority of my dislikes. Um, so Tammy says, I picked up the original Thunderbird show and I shared a show for cheap. I need to have a look at my, on the CEX app for here to see what the, what the story is for that. Uh, cause I might then pick it up. Um, Giovanni says, I just finished watching Enterprise. It's a shame it was canceled. Not happy with Frank's last episode as it was just a TNG episode. Yes. I love Enterprise. I loved my watch through of it. I would say season one and season two are better than season three and season four. Um, Trip Talker is my favorite character. I was pissed when they killed him off. And, uh, even when I was watching through, Enterprise, I knew of uh, the last episode, and I got to the second last episode. I was like, do I really want to watch it? Do I really want to watch it? And I was like, fuck it, I'll watch it. And I was like, yeah, okay, I see why this is Aiden now. Um, but yeah, it, I, I think even like Jonathan Franks and Marina Sirtis uh, apologized for that um, to the original Enterprise crew. Um, but yeah, hopefully we might see one or two of them appear in Strange New Worlds. Like we know T'Pol is definitely still alive in Strange New Worlds with how Vulcans age. So they could easily bring her actress back. Um Enterprise was also filmed when the Twin Towers went down. Uh the last episode was uh, all about Riker. Yes, that's what season three, the Zindi arc of uh Enterprise was all about. Um, was their their version of like the the twin towers going down was the Florida basically getting annihilated, um, which if you ask me, we're not really losing much if Florida goes bye bye with a you know with the whole Florida man situation. Like if you want to have a fun game, just type in go on Google, type in your birthday, uh, without the year, um. I'm just typing like so mine would be March 10th and then add Florida man on it and see what Florida man you get. Um, but yeah, I love Star Trek as we all know. Uh, I mean, a couple of months ago, I picked this up, uh, a Star Trek phaser on Amazon for, uh, 25 euro or 20 pound. Um, 
as well a little bit ago i managed to find this in a charity shop for 250 i still need to paint it um which is this model kit uss enterprise for two year 50 cent uh already put together still had the original box the original box is on my windowsill um so i i need to get my contact my cousin about painting this because he's my cousin's massive into warhammer i'm not too much I, I don't really care for warhammer um but he, he'll definitely have the paints for it uh so i'll definitely go at, oh, over to him at some point to get him to paint it depends he uh whenever he's free from work um i suppose um yeah it's a shame uh yeah it was about wreck your shame about trip uh and then tammy says i wanted to keep trip alive and have uh, have his child with DePaul. Well, in beta canon, until I guess officially confirmed in beta canon, in beta canon, it was undone. Trip's death was undone to be Trip being recruited by Section 31. Um, and he was al altered to look like a Romulan uh, to do some investigation over at, in uh romulus before obviously the earth romulan war um and then afterwards he uh in beta canon he lives happily with uh with depaul this was all uncovered by nog and jake in a uh Enter a star trek enterprise slash ds9 book in beta canon so i personally like that and i'm in my head canon that's that's real that's what what happens because i absolutely love tucker um or not tucker uh trip well technically his last name is charles tucker the third anyway yeah so uh the was my favorite she was better than seven of nine uh i definitely did like the poem but i like jerry of nine and jerry of nine jerry ryan uh a lot more uh i always loved seven of nine uh so that's that's my take on that um so yeah uh i think uh that's gonna do it for this this stream uh, i'm not sure when the next time i'm gonna do a solo stream these kind of ju it just depends really on my mood um i wasn't even sure how long i was going to do this one for but hey we got at least an hour and roughly 48 minute long stream uh, but as i keep rambling it will cross that point so thank you all for watching um i hope those who uh, were here when it was live enjoyed. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed for those who will watch the VOD afterwards. Uh, as I said, tomorrow there will be a big long review for uh, seasons one, two, and three of Star Trek, the original series that I had filmed last year when I watched it for the very first time. Though most of it was actually um, a, uh, most of it was um a rewatch for season one one episode was a rewatch for season two and then season three i went in blind um so yeah like i said it's an hour and 40 odd minutes uh so uh there will be of course uh timestamps in the comments for that uh for if you just want to skip around to just see season one or season two or season three uh depending on how well that does depends on if i do more like that uh but thank you all for watching thank you all uh thank you to Tammy and Giovanni for being here, uh, for the comments, and thank you to everyone who has commented. I really appreciate it. Uh, like I said, not sure when I'm going to do another one of these uh, solo streams again, but uh, we shall see. But that is going to wrap it up for me, and I shall see you all uh, tomorrow for another brand new video.